altered nature. The birds had their tongues tied to silver strings as they hung midair in silence. I was kneeling on the wet earth, crying out. A disembodied voice informed me that nectar was being slowly harvested from their throats, that this was the only way. Heat from their flailing bodies pressed my eyes into my skull. I tried to hold myself together in the dream, but could not. Once awake, I could not feel tender. The brutality of all architecture stunned me wherever I looked. What were we, as a species, doing? I finally summoned the will to write life on my to-do list, but kept postponing the task. I had been dreaming of the dying because I could not ignore the news from home, country not so far from the heart. This viral uncertainty keeping me afraid of intimacy. I did not want to touch what others had touched, feared any public surface. Even the air was menacing, invisible droplets omnipresent. A persistent cough soon developed as if to taunt me. My father, a rheumatologist, texts to say he is well, reminds me that he went through the SARS epidemic and never took a day off work. I have inherited the stubborn Calvinist ethic. Today, I return to where breath feels possible. My therapist asks me, what do you want? I think to myself, mother's gaze, straight gaze, male gaze, white gaze. I am ashamed to confess that I want to be reborn as the brother, the beloved son, the future patriarch. I want to see this torso in a different light, beam on it a kinder gaze as I wait for something to give. I read a poet's words, mostly we do not fail to go on living. There is fire on the streets of a city I still love, and fire in the earth's lungs as the hour ticks on. Had I simply imagined this intimate scene, the mother lying prostrate at the feet of her child, begging for a miracle, or was it the other way around?